you know, I try to be a nice guy all the time, but it doesn't all it doesn't always <laughs> that come out. That smirk says it all. <laughs> it doesn't always come out. It doesn't always come out that way. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of First in 10 presented by J.C. Penney. As always, I'm Haley Sutton, and I'm very excited to introduce my next guest. We've got J. Ron Kurtz in the house. What's up, J. Ron? Hey, how you doing? Haley? I'm doing good, doing good. I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off right off the top so we can get it out of the way. Sunday's game was obviously frustrating for multiple reasons. What made Sunday so challenging? What made it so frustrating that it kind of is lingering on? Uh, I think the way we lost the game, uh, knowing we were the better team, uh, going into halftime with the 21-7 lead, getting that lead to 27-10, and then just not finishing on both sides of the ball. Uh, that's what makes it more frustrating uh, to a lot of us, just knowing we should have won the game and then not handling our business. So. It's frustrating, especially when you're a competitor. Yeah, definitely, especially especially that. And I know we got a lot of those guys on the team. You're one of those guys, and I can tell just by talking to you, seeing how you play, where does that come from? Where's the inspiration for you to always want to be your best and want to be that competitor? Uh, for me, it's just growing up. Uh, you know, I was, I have a lot of cousins and uh, we just competed in everything we did. We all ended up at my grandma's house and whether we're out shooting hoops or running around playing football in the yard, we just always competed. So it just stuck with me moving, moving on uh, down, down my life that, you know, I just always wanted to win. I always wanted to be the best at whatever I was doing. So, you know, I think I'm in the, the perfect profession to kind of get that out there and be and be actually competitive but uh that's just where it came from and then uh you know my mom my dad you know, they just always on me about being being the best one doing it so it's just kind of stuck with yeah you. when you were growing up were you the one that always came out on top in those competitions majority of the time because i was i was always bigger than my cousins so i won advantage. yeah i won <laughs> so i won a lot uh uh but no, I took a couple. I took a couple of L's. From, uh, <laughs> you have to, right? Yeah, I took a couple of L's from some of my older cousins uh, that was also just as competitive as me. How would you describe your football journey up until this point? Challenging is not the right word, but I'll use challenging because I can't think of a better word, whether it's been college or pros. Uh, just had to fight through a lot of different things. To, uh, to be here now. So uh, that's how I would describe it. I think challenging is a good word too, kind of like a roller coaster yeah, almost. Yeah. How would you describe your role on this team? I'm the vocal leader of this team. That would be one of my biggest roles is, you know, showing the young guys what it looks like and uh, also being able to tell them what it looks like. And, you know, I try to be a nice guy all the time, but it doesn't all it doesn't always <laughs> that come smirk out. Says it, all. <laughs> it doesn't always come out. It doesn't always come out that way. So we actually just had a discussion today about how I get my message across sometimes. So, you know, I'm I'm trying to be the best leader I can be, you know, so I'm trying to take yeah. bits and pieces from everybody on how I should try to get my messages across sometimes. Sure. And it's important to recognize too that that self scout that Mike McCarthy always talks about. I love that you said that because it's taking accountability and you know making you be a better leader as well. So I'm proud of you Thank for you. being able to do that. Thank you. Something else that we have connected on is our love of fashion. I always I'm always silently judging you guys with what you're wearing in the locker room. I'm saying who's wearing what. But your fashion sense is just a little different. Can you kind of describe how how your fashion sense is and where kind of the inspiration for how you dress on game days or going out? It's really, I don't really, like, you know, we talked about this before. I just feel like it's different times that I feel like I want to wear certain things. And uh, as far as just like my fashion sense and the things that I do put on, I really just kind of try to wear what I want to wear. I don't really like to worry about, oh, if I put this on, a couple of guys might say this, but, you know, I just try to wear what I want to wear. You know, whatever I'm comfortable in is what I wear. And, uh, you know, that's kind of just how I approach, how I approach mine. Uh, you know, I just, I wear what I want to wear, you know, and whatever I put on, I feel like I look good. So. A little hair flip there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you talked about being a competitor and something else 
that we have talked about before that you guys compete in is bowling. And it's not just you, but it's Micah. Malik Hooker told me that you guys bowling. What is it about the Dallas Cowboys and having bowling being the secondary sport? Bowling is just fun. It's just a fun thing to do. It's just a fun thing to do. Uh, especially if you got the right group of guys around you. You know, you have a couple drinks, you know, <laughs> and then go out there and bowl. Uh, it's just it's just fun. And it's uh it's very competitive. It's very competitive, especially, you know, being with the guys you named, the mm -hmm. competitive guys. So uh, you know, you got guys that throw it straight down the lane. You got guys that put a little spin on it. You know, it's fun to pick on the guys that really can't bowl. And I you know, it's on. <laughs> and it's uh, it's also fun to compete with the guys that actually can bowl a little bit. Uh, so I don't know what makes it the secondary sport, but it's just fun. It's just who's your, fun. Who's your biggest competition? Uh, I haven't bowled with Micah. I haven't bowled with Micah. I heard he's good though. Uh. Sounds like we need a little Micah versus J. Ron in there. Yeah, right. Maybe. No, I don't think I, I don't think I have. I don't think I have any competition. That's you know, like. Talk. Nah, it's just I'm just being a hundred percent honest. <laughs> like I don't think I have much competition. I've never seen Micah bowl. I bowl with Malik. I don't, Malik's not in my league. Uh, bowl with Donovan. Donovan's. Donovan does it just to be around us and just have fun. You know, we. A uh, couple of other guys, all of the safeties, basically, you know, not in my league, but, you know, we do it just to come together as a unit. It's, it's fun. It's all fun, right. even though I'm always winning. All right. We'll have to see. We'll have to set that up sometime. Um, my last question for you, and I've been asking all of the guys this, and I love the responses that I've been getting. Uh, my time with the Dallas Cowboys has been blank. Finish that sentence for me. Awesome. Why is that? Like we just talked about, my career and how it's went to this point has been challenging. And uh, since I've gotten here, it's a complete flip on how it started. You know, I was a special teams guy, you know, played sparingly on defense. Uh, went to Detroit the year after that, and just ever since I got to Dallas, the trajectory of my career has been, it, it's awesome, it's just awesome. Uh, it's uh, it's how I pictured it would be when I first got into the league. You know, it took a couple of years, but it's it's finally here, and you know, I'm just trying to continue day by day, getting better, and trying to keep it going that way. But uh, it's been awesome, life changing. That's awesome. I love that answer. Okay, congratulations. You survived the hard part. This is the fun part. Okay. Call this the final drive. So we're gonna put a minute up on the clock. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Answer as many of them as you can as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay? All right, here we go. Three, two, one. First question, in the spirit of Christmas, what's the best gift you've ever received? Uh, a video game. If you could live in another country, where would it be? Mm. <laughs> mm. Whew. I don't know, I never thought about that. All right, we'll you go got the next me on one. That one. We'll you go the next one. That. If you were stranded on a deserted island, what's one thing you would want to have? Water. Okay, good answer. Would you ever go to space? No. How would you describe yourself in one word? Awesome. Netflix or Hulu? <laughs> Hulu. If you had to eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Spaghetti. What was the first phone you ever had? Blackberry. What was your best subject in school? Math. What's your biggest fear? Heights. Heights? Yes. Right on the money. Everyone else has said snakes, so yeah. thank you for having a different fear. Yeah. I'm scared of snakes too. Yeah. But my biggest fear? Heights. I'm scared of heights, yeah. I like Terrified heights. Terrified of heights, no shit. <laughs> so no snakes and no heights. No. I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna give you some time next week to think about where you would live in another country. Okay. Okay. Cause that's a good one. But J-Ron, always so good to get to chat with you and good to kind of get the fans an opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. Thank you, Haley. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. That will do it for another edition of First in 10 presented by JCPenney. We'll see you next week.